Hello guys. This is the first video of our new playlist on the channel dedicated for all the CNC stuff. Today we will make a small 3D relief carving of a horse head. Generally, the 3D carving is a confusing task especially for beginners on the CNC world. Don't worry though, because in this video we will cover all areas from creating the G-code to finishing the final product. So, let's get started. First of all we need to open easel. For this project, we'll use some of the pro features that are also available on the 30-day free trial. So, when we are right here, we have to choose our material. This doesn't make any difference for the software it's only so that we can have a better look of our final piece. So if you can't find your specific material don't worry. I'm gonna use olive wood for this project, but since it isn't listed I choose pine. Then we insert the dimensions of all three axes. In order to open our 3D model we have to click here that says import 3D STL file. We select our file and hit open. And here is our 3D model opened. Now, the first thing to do is to set how big our engraving will be. I'll make it like 45 millimeters on the X axis and by clicking this link icon, all three axes will adjust automatically. I'll also change the position of our model on the Z axis because I don't want to engrave this deep. Be careful not to set it too high to not lose any details. After that we can open the cut style menu and I'll choose the rectangle relief. This option will create a border around our model in order to stand out more. We'll set the size of this border after the depth. For the depth I'll choose 5.1 millimeters since our model has this exact height. Now it's time for the padding and since I'll use a 3.8 millimeter bit I am going to set it to 4. Remember that the padding should always be a little bit bigger than your bit diameter. Right on the bottom here, we can see the finishing tool paths. Here we can choose in which direction our finishing pass will be, depending on our wood grain direction. It's better to go with the grain for a cleaner cut. So, now we are done with the design process, but we are not done yet. We have to set the bits we'll use. Depending on your collection of bits, you fill these fields. You should definitely use a bigger bit for the roughing pass and a small detail bit for the finishing pass, whether it's a ball nose or a V-bit. The last step before generate the tool paths is to set our feeds and speeds. That's another confusing task for any beginner. Here on Easel it's a lot easier than other programs. I'll set the feed rate to 420 mm per minute and the plunge rate 220 mm per minute. Also, I'm gonna change the depth per pass to 0.2 mm because my 3018 machine is not that powerful. Respectively, we do it for the finishing pass. Remember that feeds and speeds will be different depending on your machine. You have to test it and see which settings work best for you. So, now we can generate the tool paths by clicking right here. When we're done we can see the simulation of both our roughing and finishing pass as well as a preview of our engraved piece. If we're satisfied, we can either save the G-code or start the engraving by clicking here. So, I have clamped the piece down and I have put the bigger bit in the collet. As always, we set the zero point and hit carve. Here is the roughing pass done and we need to change the bit now. This is the step that nobody talks about. So, we have to move our machine a few millimeters in order to change the bit. Be careful and remember the exact distance you moved it. I moved it on the x-axis. Now that we have installed the detail bit, we need to take the machine back on its point. So, we move it again on the x-axis, but as you can see my v-bit is a lot shorter than the flat end mill I was using before. So, we need to set our zero on the z-axis again. There is nothing difficult to that. As we did before, if we don't have a z-probe, we use a piece of paper. We lower the bit until it touches the paper. 
Now take the paper out and lower the bit by 0.1 millimeters. That's the thickness of the paper. Now we can finish the job. Now that our piece is done, we sand the edges. I'll also burn my logo on it. The final step is to apply a finish. I am using a mineral oil and beeswax mix that is food safe and shows off the beautiful color and grain of the olive wood. Our creation is finally done. Thanks for watching.